What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pastor Study in the New Year on Smooth 88.1 WHOV, iHeartRadio. And if you're watching us on Facebook, you can see us live in living color. Welcome again, everybody. We thank you. We got another year ahead of us. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a great year plan of good conversation. And as always, you, the listening audience, make the show special. Pastor Ray Johnson is still with us in the new year. Even the Washington football team made it to the playoffs. Ah, <laughs> my, my. You, you know it, it, the rapture about to be coming. Well, There's a God up. somewhere, Reverend. There's a God somewhere. He sits high and he looks low, <laughs> even down at my lowly Washington football team. I'm just glad yes. that they made it to the playoffs. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take our one and done and be happy with that and uh, get ready for next year. But, man, I'm just glad to make it in. Look, I'm glad to make it into the new year. COVID free, nobody in my family was able, uh, uh, attracted it in any way, made it all the way through daughters, girls, family, parents. And I get to say that, that phrase y'all been saying for a while, wife also, COVID free. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got my good friend and my brother, Anton Bell, a, a Commonwealth attorney in the city of Hampton, affectionately known on this show as Pastor Law. What's How going on, Ray? Kevin, man, good James, to see you. Good to see all of you guys. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year, yeah, man. Yeah, all is well. I'm extremely excited about this new year. This is the year of transformation, the year of metamorphosis. And so I am extremely excited about what God is going to do in this year. And of course, you know, we got our producer extraordinary, the great one, I call him. Uh, Jason Covington, who always works so hard behind the scene to make us look good and to help us to walk in excellence. So what's going on, Jason? Hey, man. I, for this year, always introduce me, man. I appreciate it. I get no love. <laughs> no love. <laughs> That's your job. What's up, y'all? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Love all y'all. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny, man. This is this is just the fellas today. You know, yeah. uh, we, we don't have the ladies with us today. Now, if you're just listening, don't. Don't don't tune us out because because Alvin and Sia aren't with us today. We still got a great show, but this is one of the rare times. It's just men only on, on, the, on the show. Oh, we're gonna turn it out today. We're gonna turn it out today. <laughs> I got some things I want to say about Alvin. Then she ain't gonna be here. Oh. <laughs> New Year, don't, don't, don't do it. it. New Year, New Year. Do I got it. some things I want to say about <laughs> Alvin and Sia since they're not here. But I'm gonna be nice. Today. I'm gonna be nice. So we're gonna take a break. We're gonna get back into the question of the day. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. This is Smooth 88.1 WHOV, iHeartRadio, and now live on Facebook. Go. And we're back on Smooth 88.1 WHOV, iHeartRadio, and also on Facebook. And listen, we need y'all to come over and leave your comments on our Facebook page. If you're watching us, we definitely want to hear your comments today. And, and obviously, we're going to be talking about the big news that happened last week, Pastor Ray, um, with, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, you know, uh, some people are saying it's an insurrection. Some people are saying it's a mob. But what we literally saw is citizens that breached the Capitol building uh, during a congressional hearings to confirm now President Biden. Um, we, we saw people strolling through the Capitol building, uh, <laughs> unchecked. <laughs> we saw people leave the Capitol building with no arrest. No arrest. It's just so much to process here, uh, Pastor Ray. But, you know, I, I want to first start with what was your initial reaction when you saw all of this going down? Uh, I mean, anybody could go back and check my Facebook page. I literally said, I sat in shock and awe, first of all. Uh, not since 1812 has the U.S. Capitol uh, been breached. And at that time, we all know it was burned. I, I literally could not believe what I was seeing with my own eyes. But then when I looked closer, I mean, immediately my thoughts went to how, why, and then immediately I went to who. Uh, and then when I came back from who, I went back to how is this even possible? Uh, how is it even happening? I mean, now my years of serving well, it goes all the way back to the early 90s. I've worked in both the Rayburn and uh, Cannon building. You can't even on 
uh, you can't even get to the park without showing your badge. So um, how this could take place, uh, it, it leaves one to really ask the question, who really could allow something like this to happen? But I agree with everything you just said, Pastor Swan. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing anarchy. I'm seeing insurrection. Uh, I'm seeing, you know, deep state at work, if you will. Uh, and we all know, I'm sure we'll get into it later on in the show, uh, if it had been others uh, that would be reflective of what we look like, uh, body counts would have been high and all sorts of things may have and probably would have taken place. And so uh, really what we're seeing is the the sign of the times, if you will, in regards to not being able to to at least follow what our democratic republic suggests. And that's the peaceful transition of power. And uh, some people just don't want to give up power. Yeah, and Pastor, I'm going to come to you last because I got so many questions for you, man. I I, I want to get to Jason here real quick. Uh, Jason, we're watching this unfold. You know, I, I'm thinking there are a lot of historical moments in our country, some low moments. 9-11 was a low moment. And mm -hmm. I'm watching this unfold, and I'm saying I, I, I was literally speechless. I, I don't think, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was, what I was seeing. Yeah. And so, Jason... What were your thoughts, man, about when you first saw all this go down? Man, I, it, it's like what you just said, just trying to formulate the words in my head. I can't even get it right now because I was at work. I'm, I was working on some stuff and I get a, I get a text and the text read, the clowns are storming the, the Capitol. And I'm like, well, I know it's a protest up there, but I, you know, I then I get an alert on my phone I go to a news app and then I see I see folk climbing the walls, kicking in the doors, going in the speaker uh, office with their feet up, wrote a letter and said, we will not back down. And then you see other graphics where people are taking a podium and now the podium, I don't know if it's real, but it was a meme that said the podium is on eBay. Like how, this is my thing. How do you breach the capital of the United States of America. It, now, this is a joke, but if they had the deacons from the Baptist church, no one would have gotten into the Capitol building. <laughs> but you talk yeah. about the Capitol building of the United States of America. Not <laughs> only did they get in, these jokers let them walk around for hours. They had the congressional leaders in bunkers and underground uh, tunnels for three to four hours while they disperse. You go back during the summer, as uh, uh, Pastor Law talked about the uh, black, like I was in DC a couple of months ago and I, I walked in Black Lives Matter Plaza. I saw the gates around the church where the, uh, the, the former president very soon was, was up there with the Bible held up upside down. And you saw how they blasted them with rubber bullets, tear gas, but these jokers come there and tell you what they're going to do. It, it, it won't no surprise. You go on, on social media, these folks say, we go on there and take back our capital. First of all, that ain't your capital. No. Second of all, why weren't y'all at work with me? Come you know, on. 30,000 people at least going, uh, Swan, I am flabbergasted. <laughs> and we got run amok because Say what you want to say. Say what you want to say. If those people look like me, we wouldn't have a pastor study today. Yeah, that, we're going to talk about that question. We, we're definitely going to get there. Um, and, we, and we all know that to be true. And we're going to have that conversation. But Pastor Law, mm. Pastor Law, uh, you, you're in law. You, I mean, I, I, first of all, what was your initial reaction when you saw all this going down? Okay, so I will put my pastor head on first, okay? All right. Uh, Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But he comes that he, we may have life, but life more abundantly. Here's the reality. I wasn't shocked. Why? Because when you invite the devil to dinner, you feed him, you entertain him, you dance with him. And then when it's time for him to leave, you don't think he's going to first try to kill you? Then you are really mistaken. We have danced with this devil for four plus years. 
and he showed us who he was up front. He told us who he was, but we refused to believe him. So now when it's time for him to go out the door and he's facing so much of the consequences that is pending against him, now desperation sets in. And as we all know, desperate people do desperate things. And so you got an individual telling them, let us go to the Capitol and tell and demand from our legislators to vote a certain way. And he sends them to the Capitol and he gets into his car and go back home. What did you think was going to happen? And they told them, look, take it by force. Because you had people out there with their Bibles and with their flags talking about Jesus and the whole nine. Or no God in there, y'all. I mean, it just wasn't. It was, it was an insurrection, a violent uprising against authority or government. That is what an insurrection is. That's the definition. It was yeah, an insurrection. And, and look. Yeah, and you're right. There were Jesus flags out there. Yeah. Uh, and there may have been some who may have legitimately believed that they were doing the work of the Lord, right? And, <laughs> and listen, I, that I, we'll, we'll get to that, right? And then no, there might be there might be some spirit. listening right now, watching the show, who are still <laughs> Trump supporters. So we want to be careful. Don't don't be calling the station talking about we hating on Republicans or Trump. We just I'm just saying the Bible. They call me. Call spirit. me. <laughs> Can I get my number out? Call me. But, but here, but here, here's the point I want to ask Pastor Law. People who are upset are going to do things like that. When when we are upset, we go out in the streets. We we get upset. We march. We we do all what. My question is, how in the world were they allowed or even able to get even close to the Capitol building? let alone scale it, let alone walk through it, let alone enter House and Senate chambers and ransack it, let alone going into elected officials' offices. How in the world does anybody get that close to the Capitol knowing there is a congressional hearing that's going on? Help okay, me. So, let's, so can, can I just break it down to you? Let me break it down to you. So the Insurrection Act of 1807 gives the President of the United States the power and the authority to federalize the National Guards to come out whenever there are acts of insurrection. And I've already defined to you what an insurrection is. That is a valid overthrow or a valid act towards an authority or government. So the Insurrection Act of 1807 gives him that power. Prior to the rally that turned into an insurrection, you had the mayor of D.C. who called and asked for the president to federalize the guards so that they would have sufficient staff that would have been there to protect the Capitol and the legislature because there was already rumbling and, and, and really there was explicit indications that there were going to be individuals. No, there was going to be a mass of individuals coming to the Capitol in protest of the legislators certifying the results from the states. So we already knew a mass of individuals were coming. I mean, it was it was all over the Internet. So she did this. She was denied. So all she had was the Capitol Police, which is nothing in comparison to thousands of individuals. And they did not have on any riot gear. They did not have on any PPEs. They didn't have on anything. So you had people in their face. I, that was a super spreader event, by the way. We're going to find out later on. But that was a super spreader. Because you didn't see any of those individuals were masked. They came out there and they were in their face. They were fighting them. They were pushing them out the way. They were doing everything else. But nonetheless, there was not sufficient armed individual law enforcement officers there to respond to the threat like we saw with Black Lives Matter, where you had federalized marshals 
from more than 10 to 15, 20 states that were out there for a peaceful protest. So that's my point. Are you suggesting then that- I ain't suggesting nothing. I'm saying oh. it. So, that, so, that's, just, that's just, come on yeah. now. Yeah. My chair. Come on. Good. Now, let's be clear then. Let's be clear. <laughs> You're saying, so no, I want to make sure that the, the audience understands that the reason why there wasn't sufficient police was because the mayor requested it, was denied. Yes. And then the president could have enlisted the National Guard and chose and, not to do so. And he did not. What 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 people do not understand, well, some people do, because uh, it was uh, put on other media outlets. So some people may know this and some people may not know this. But Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, got with the Vice President, Michael Pence, and the two of them were able to get the National Guards out there. That's when you had the National Guards called out there. But prior to that, Trump refused to do that. He refused to do it, would not respond to that, even when it got out of hand, even when it bust through the, uh, the windows and all the things that were going on, he still did not federalize the marshals for them to come out there and stop the violence. He came out and did a little recording which said, well, you know, they stole the election from me. And you know, I love you people, but you know, y'all need to go home now. You know, even though I know you're angry and I'm angry too, but you need to go, who, who heard that? Nobody heard that. All they heard was you're right. You're angry. You have a right to be angry. You have the right to respond the way you respond. However, you know, we don't want the flat that we're getting right now. That's all they heard. And they kept doing what they were doing. Pastor Ray, it took four hours, man, for the National Guard to get to the Capitol building. Four hours. <laughs> they had Molotov cocktails out there that could have gone. They, they had other things. A woman got shot. Right. They had pipe bombs. And they killed. had pipe bombs. Right. Right. They, had, they had, it could have gone much, much worse. Thank God it didn't. But they had enough ammunition to set that place on fire and burn it down. Four hours. Now we know <laughs> if it was us, <laughs> this would have gone a completely different. And I think that for me, Pastor Ray, oh, is the Lord. bigger issue here. It ain't just that they ride it. It ain't <laughs> just that they climb the building and walk through it. It's the fact that we know that if it were black people that were doing this, this would have gone completely differently. It would have been a massacre. No question. no question. No Absolutely. No, no question about it. And a fr friend of mine, I'm, 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 I'm going to do three hats. I'm, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put my Bishop elect hat on and then I'm going to wear my little overseer's hat and then I'm going to be the downtown preacher that I am. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to save him for last. <laughs> so, so, you know, I've said this before several times. We're at a, we're at a place where I really believe this with my whole heart. I believe that heaven is given America an opportunity to have what I would call substantive repentance with restitution to get the issues of race correct so mm -hmm. that the hearts of men and women can change. So these pop-ups and skirmishes that we have seen over the last, I would say 10 to 15 years is really designed for us to get to a place where we dig into the soil of the muck and mire of America's history that is deep seated throughout the deep south, that is also deep seated throughout different pockets of the north, that is really stationary in the Midwest to get that up out and in the open. Because you can't change uh, or have transformation, Pastor Law, unless you first have an acknowledgement of what needs to change and acknowledging you're wrong. So America has a nice history of sweeping stuff under the rug and trying to clean it up, okay? Without lifting the rug back, sweeping the dirt up off the floor and then figuring out where the dirt came from and closing the door so the dirt don't get back in. Now that, that that's one. On, the, on another level, um, we have every time we address these issues, 
at the same time, think about what was happening in Wisconsin with no charges to the man, to the officers who shot the man in the back. So you have insurrection happening at the U.S. Capitol, okay, anarchy at its finest. And at the same time, the justice system is not doing its job in regards to making sure that there's fairness or at least, Pastor Law, some kind of what I would call an appropriate response to a crime that's committed. And I would give a legal term for that, but I'll stay in the reverence lane. On, on the other area, if anybody from 23607 down here where our pastor at was even close, matter of fact, if they'd have, if they'd have got out on First Street, Pastor Swan, before they would have made it out of Union Station, they would have been shot, gunned down, no questions asked, laid out in the street. Blood would have been running everywhere and already a politicized campaign to demonize them would have already been running on news affiliates to justify the shootings and the taking of black life. There's no so question about that. That, that, that. that which is just to say the deep seatedness of race in America has yet, and I know we got a whole lot of people, look, I'm about, this is just, this ain't the pastor study. This is Ray Johnson saying this. Pastor Swan didn't say it. Anton Bell didn't say it. Jason Covington I mean, didn't say it. And so I'm as sick and tired of foot washing services. I don't want to go to not near one, no more racial reconciliation services. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to go to no more prayer meetings. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray, but all of that stuff uh, gets to a place where it becomes so politicized and we do things for sound bites and for news clippings and for, um, uh, for, for tweets that it doesn't produce any kind of substantive change. And the only way there will be change is when there's policy change and policy doesn't change. Policy does not change until people lose money. And that's just kind of where that is. And unfortunately, we're at the place now where we got to deal with the results of where we are as a nation, which is to say this, until our evangelical friends that don't look like us start to have a moral outrage with things like Kenosha, Wisconsin, and things like what took place in Charlottesville, and then what just happened at the U.S. Capitol building, until they get in the face of the folk that look like them that perpetrate this stuff, you can't talk to us about forgiveness and reconciliation and love. You just can't because you got racism straight up in your face, loud. Yeah, now I know what we're gonna be talking about on Sunday. I don't know what other people are gonna be talking about, but I mean, that's a whole <laughs> nother conversation there. And right. if, you're just, if you're just tuning in, y'all know what we're talking about. We, we're talking about what we saw on the Capitol building. Leave your comments uh, on the Facebook page here uh, at the Pastor Study. Pastor Law, I, I just gotta ask you this. So let me play the other side for radio in for Facebook. There is you, know, you know you already got Jason with his head on backwards. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. Listen, I, I, I want to, there, there are some people, there are some people, because some people hit me up who are supporters still, and oh. they say, what's the difference between what we saw in D.C. than what's happened in Portland and other places where people were encouraged to go through the streets and deface property and take down statues and, and, and do all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and what you saw was the same thing, but now you want to make it a bigger deal because it was President Trump. How come there wasn't outrage when Portland was under siege? This, this is the other side. What, what do you say to that, Pastor? What I would say is you have a variety of opinions concerning how people perceive different events, because when I looked at Portland and I saw the initial protest, I was like, good. And then when I saw the defacing of property, when I saw the, the violence, when I saw and it's, it's not from everybody, it's always going to be certain people that's going to be in any uh, group that's always looking for opportunities to show out. So. You have to look at each situation and look at what is the true motivation behind it. But the motivation that was going on behind the Portland situation was that 
you had people who felt that they had no value by our government. They had no value by our world systems. And so all the policies were against them and the policies were leading to death by the hundreds in the streets. And the truth of the matter is, it was probably thousands if not millions because we can really trace this all the way back to slavery as we talk about it. Because what we're seeing is just uh, individuals who are trying to oppress people who look different than them. So that's a different scenario. But in DC, what you had were individuals, and again, it wasn't everyone because everybody who was at the rally did not storm the, the Capitol. So you, you can't put everybody in the same block. But the ones who stormed the Capitol, their specific purpose for doing so was to stop the legislators from certifying the vote for Biden and for Harris from the states. So they were purposely trying to stop the peaceful transfer of power, which is at the very core of our democracy and of our nation. And so they were trying to stop that. And there, there are laws that are directly on point with that. It is a felony, federal felony, to incite a riot, to encourage, to do anything, to uh, try to use any type of violence against the government, any type. It, 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 is, it, it could cause you to be in prison up to 10 years or be fined, and you can't hold public office once you're convicted of that. It's called a uh, violation of the Insurrection Act. So you, again, are dealing with individuals who are literally creating, to me, I think, treason to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Because that's so, then, so, so then, Pastor Law, you got all these people on camera. How come won't nobody arrest them? You know everybody want arrested. Come on, man. Let's. I mean, we're gonna talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's and talk we, about it. how come they get to go home. We don't get to go home when stuff happens to us. We are in a word. body bang it's when it happens word. to us. It's so, one so they get to go in. They get to do all this stuff. And at the end of the day, they're going back to the hotel bragging because they got pictures of what they they got video of what they did that day. How is word. it? How how do they get to go home, uh, Pastor Law? It's called privilege. Now, I just dropped the mic on you. Y'all can't hear it on the radio, but I just dropped the mic on you. It's called privilege. White people do not fear the police. No. They already know that if they have an encounter with the police, their encounter historically has not been deathly or a a cause of death or deadly. It has not been deadly. Their interaction with law enforcement has not been normally, normally negative. Their interaction with law enforcement has normally been good, pleasant, positive. Why you can be someone who is literally committing insurrection, go into the Capitol and take selfies with the Capitol (laughs) Police. You can be someone who is coming from another state and going into another state with a, a shotgun to go and shoot protesters who are peacefully protesting and be offered water by the local law enforcement. Why? Because you are considered friendly foe, not foe. Well, I guess you can't call it foe because you are someone that's against what they're trying to do, which is uphold the law. So, but you're considered friendly. You're considered someone who I'm not afraid of. I've not been taught to be afraid of. I've not been taught that you're going to do harm to me. So there is a privileged mindset and a perception that we can never understand because we have historically been afraid of the police. Even when we do the right thing from somebody just this week that got pulled over by a trooper was said that he was in a, a stolen vehicle. It was his vehicle. The boy works at UVA, smart guy, black boy, but they pulled him out, handcuffed him in the rain for over an hour and a half, told him that he was someone that was suspected of kidnapping somebody and was a dangerous felon. And when it was all said and done, 
and they realized it was all a mistake, told him to go about his way. But for two hours, he did not know what his destiny was going to hold for him, whether it was going to be life or death. The people in the majority race, they don't deal with that. They don't, no, know, they, they, they don't, they don't know anything about that. They don't have to live in our world. No, we have to live in theirs. And, and you're 100% right on, on that. And I hope people understand, if nothing else, this was the greatest example of privilege that we will ever see. It's clear as day. George Floyd, he gets a knee on his neck. Eight Gone. minutes and 46 seconds. Gone. You got, a, you got a group of people, thousands, who get to stroll through the Capitol. And, and the officers are taking pictures. Somebody said on social media, it ain't about sensitivity training and de-escalation training for the police. They already know how to do it. They just don't do it for us. So It's called, it's called discretion, Kevin. It is. It's called discretion. Law enforcement has discretion and they should have discretion. They really should. So for anyone who said, no, they should have. No, they need discretion because there are times when they can give a warning and, and go about your business. So they should have discretion. It's a heart issue. It's a personnel issue. If you got the wrong people in the wrong position, guess what? You're going to always have a wrong result. It don't matter what the discretion is. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It's going to always be a wrong result. We have to make sure we have the right people in those positions because otherwise the discretion is going to go north. Let, 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 me, let me offer this real quick. I'm going to read something and y'all tell me who, who said it. This is back in May. We're going to do it from May to right now. So back in May, someone said, these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd and I won't let that happen. I spoke to the governor, Tim Waltz, and told him that the military is with him all the way. Any difficulty, and we will assume control. But when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you. Yesterday, these are the things that invent. Now, this, now y'all want to call and say, you know, we making up stuff. This is documented. This is, these are historical records. I'm reading. This is documentation. We make this stuff. All right, going back. These are the things and events that happen when a sacred landslide election victory is so unceremoniously and ambitiously, excuse me, stripped away from the great patriots who have been badly and unfairly treated for so long. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to go back to church to say that. Viciously stripped away from the patriots who have been badly and unfairly treated for so long. Go home with love and peace. Remember this day forever. I love you and I know your pain, but please go home. Do, do you see the contrast? And, and, and people gonna still see what they wanna see. That that's the issue because when you have privilege, you can still see it however you choose to see it. And and Pastor Ray, this let me play the other side for you too. Because right? you're also... <laughs> In politics, you you were an elected official. So, so some people feel that the election was stolen. And they say the election was stolen because the laws got changed in certain states <laughs> to allow more people to vote, which then caused a certain candidate to win and another candidate to lose. This this is why they feel disenfranchised and they feel fed up. You okay. feel like They've been uh, mistreated because the system changed and our candidate did not lose. Never mind seven million votes, popular votes were, were more for about never mind 306 is what ne never mind all that. But because they didn't lose, the election got stolen. What do you say to those people? I, I'll come right back to I'm gonna come right in the sphere of where Pastor Law is. I believe that the number of federal judges that were appointed by the current administration is somewhere upwards at around 40 or 50 judges when you start looking throughout the appellate court districts, Pastor Law. Am I close to being right? So, and it may be more than that. It may be more than that. So, now when it comes time for these elect, for the electoral college system to have a challenge, if you will. 
and for these votes to be counted, the judges that he appointed said, bring me something of substance to show me where there has been some sort of foul play or miscounting or uncounted or undocumented voted votes. These were the judges that he appointed to represent these districts between Pennsylvania to Florida, all the way over to uh, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, all the way through down in Texas. We had four of them down in Texas. So I, I'm, I don't get the, the whole, I understand the notion of foul play, but when you come down to the substance of it and counting it by the numbers in the electoral college system, he had nothing to stand on. And the scripture does say, since this is the pastor study and, and people say, you know, we, we getting away from, from the Bible, Proverbs 20 and 23 says this, the Lord detests, here it is, double standards. And he is not pleased by unbalanced weights, measures, and scales. What America has is one set of rules for black and brown, or one set of rules for people who would not experience privilege by way of wealth, and another set of rules for people who are black and brown and poor and cannot afford access. And what the problem here is, is that we are continuing to have an imbalanced weight and scale and a double measuring of how we are providing freedom for the citizens of these United States of America. So for him, it would, it would, it would seem, Pastor Swan, that you appoint people to the court who see the world the way that you do on one end or are at least objective enough to apply the law in an appropriate way based upon what the intent of the law is uh, in terms of your attendance on how it's written. Now, these are his judges who couldn't find a reason as to why the election shouldn't be certified, which is to say you have a spoiled brat in the White House who just can't have his way. It, it, it's like this. It's like your two, two-year-old that you tell, don't take the cookies off the stove, the stove is too hot. The two-year-old want the cookies anyway. You pop their hand when they try to go get them. Then all of a sudden you said, you know what? All right. You want to keep on going and you wait till you hear that yet loud scream because the stove is too hot. We're dealing with somebody who got their hand on the stove and it's too hot and the loud scream can't even help them. So you're dealing with something else. And I'm going to close it right here. This is my closing line for the show to all of my evangelical friends who wanted to yell out and say, this is Darius from the Bible. I kept saying to you, it's Nebuchadnezzar because he's in love with his own image. Now, Pastor Law, they weren't contesting all 50 states. Notably, they weren't contesting the states of which he won. No. They contested Wisconsin. Yes. They contested Michigan. Yes. They contested Pennsylvania. Yes. They contested Georgia. Yes. Arizona. Arizona. And Nevada. Nevada. So, so let's take Nevada out of it for just a moment. And this is going to be our show probably next week. Those states that I just mentioned, what they did not account for was black people showed up in Milwaukee. Black people showed up in Detroit. Black people showed up in Philly. Black people showed up in Atlanta. Alton County. And, and minorities showed up in Phoenix. Yes. And, and because of that, and maybe not anticipating that Blacks would turn out in the numbers that we did, they reasoned that a president that had 75 million votes, the only way that they could lose is if the election was stolen. Now, you are a prosecutor. You know about law. Help people to understand that when you bring forth a case, you got to have some burden of proof to make sure that whatever you're saying comes true. And this is what I've said to people. If you say it's fraud or if you say it was stolen, Show me where's your proof? Show me Explain to people how this works. So in, in, in the court of law, if you are making an allegation against another individual, whether it is a criminal or a civil matter, 
the person that is bringing the suit has the burden of proof, which means you have to present the evidence to be able to substantiate your case. Now, in a civil matter, the burden is very low. It's by preponderance of evidence. That means a little bit more than half. If it's a criminal matter, then it's beyond a reasonable doubt. But in these matters, it was civil. So the burden of proof was really low, which is a preponderance of the evidence. They couldn't even meet that threshold. Why? Because there was no evidence. What they had was a spoiled brat who is used to always getting his way. And even when he couldn't get his way, his daddy or his money helped him to delay the inevitable. But his daddy is gone and his money is low. And so as a result of that, he's inevitably got to deal with now the consequences of what has occurred, which is you lost. Losing is a part of life or falling is a part of life. You can learn from that and keep growing. But if you are someone that is narcissistic in your uh-huh. nature and someone who is a bully in nature, you feel that you could do something to force the waves to go in your direction. And it has not. And I'm sorry, the law is not going to bend just for you simply because you tell them to bend. Just like when he picked up that phone call and called that secretary of state in Georgia, and he thought, oh boy, was going to turn around and find him 12,000 more votes. But old boy said, I got a trick for you. And he taped them. And when he taped them, because he knew he was a lying dog, and he taped them, and he released that tape when he got on, uh, got out there in the public, said, oh, I ain't never say that. Release that tape and say, there it is. There's my evidence. Those are my receipts. But some oh. people are still going to say. I don't care what they say. The election was stolen. <laughs> that They going to believe it. I, I've talked to people on social. They still say Trump won. They're going to go to their grave. You know why? Believing How? The Trump. You know why? You know why? Because this is the same con artist that told you, if I go to Times Square in the middle of the day and kill somebody, they'll still believe me. Right. You have some people who are clinging to people who they know may not necessarily be the best person, may, they know may not necessarily be a good person, but because of the way they make them feel, who, who is it, my Angelo to say, you may not remember what I say, right. but you will remember how I made you feel when I said it. And right. he has a way of touching the deepest parts of people, brokenness and hurt, because the devil... Yeah, Pastor Ray, talk about that, man, because I, I was going to ask that question. That that was the question. I was. What is it about him? Done. Well, the reality of it is, I don't care what he says, what he does, and and in a few more days, old boy gonna be gone, and then the consequence. The Bible says what? Sin is pleasure before a moment, and then the consequence. Yeah, you're right, but. But they, but he's not going to go away. His base is not going to go away quietly, um, and so it, it raises the question, Pastor Ray and Jason, what 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 is it about him that draws so many people? I, I think Pastor Law just said maybe he has a way of touching people and and really connecting with their hurt. Maybe he tapped into a place where uh, there are a lot of people who feel like the country is going in a direction of which they don't agree with. But there are many candidates that can do that. But it was something about him. There is something about him that they're willing to go to the grave with with him. Pastor Ray Jason, what y'all think it is? That's right. Let me jump in real quick. You got to last a minute. I need need 45 seconds. Do it. Trump tapped into is what America was founded on. The, the violence, the hatred, the 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 idolatry, all those things. Trump just brought all those to the first the surface. And let us let's and let's not even talk about the fact that eight well almost 12 years ago now, we had the first black man in office. You know how many people got peed off and ticked off behind that? Now you got somebody that's going to give you credence 
and give you permission to say how you feel because he says what he says. This man in the, on the back of a bus, mic'd up, admitted to sexual assault on camera and said, I just do it because I got money. Let me do it. If you can let me go and just look at a woman diff- funny and I'm going to prison. You go to go. This man, he he was able to do what he did and continue to do what he does. Michelle, I'm sorry, that's bad, bad language. He did what he did, did what he does because America to his to her core is sinful, broken, and needs deliverance. So until we get there, not, not just white evangelicals, our black until we all realize. We are all going to hell if we don't repent. Trump will come back again unless he die. And then his, ret- his, I'm sorry, that was almost completely incorrect. His <laughs> talent kids are here and about to take up his mantle. So, so that raises right. the point, Pastor Ray, because what rightly or wrongly, whether we like him or not, position or not, what he has done is he's brought a lot of things to the surface. Um, that maybe we didn't want to deal with before, but but now it is so far out in the open that now you got to deal with it. So Absolutely. Is, is this the underbelly of America that this is what America has always been? And and because this people will say all this didn't just happen when when he took office, right? This, so so what is it, Pastor? What what is the underbelly of America? This is this is the gist. I, I hate to say this, and I don't want to be doom and gloom too bad here, but Trump is is indicative of the tip of the iceberg of what's wrong with America, because uh, we we like to to espouse America's Judeo Christian heritage, and I'm one of those that believes that it has a Judeo Christian heritage in terms of its influence upon the rule of law. I believe that. However, along with that is the duality. Of, fle- of what I call flesh on parade, which is unless you got the money to be able to pay for your honey, ain't going to be no bees coming from the tree, <laughs> which is just simply to say America likes to run uh, religious Christian ideals from their standpoint. Remember, Jesus was not an American and we Westerners have a hard time dealing with this Middle Eastern man that had dark skin. But I'm not even going to all of that. I'm just simply going to say this is that there's this duality that runs along the stream of America that is systematic inside of all of our institutions of how we do what we do as a culture of people. And this is what I believe heaven is after changing, because on the one side of our mouths, we say one thing. But on the other side of our mouths, money rules the day and runs every kind of conglomerate institution and segment of society that we're involved in. And really, Jesus already told us you can't serve God in mammon, which is to say money of itself can be a God based upon how people use it. Now, we know it's the love of money, but that's got to get that gets down to the base nature of every human being. And, and I would say it like this. Um, you know, when you look at Saul and David, really, God wanted to lead Israel. He wanted to lead them with the person he had chosen for them based on that person's heart. And so when Israel decided they want a king like the rest of the surrounding nations, what did God tell uh, Samuel? Chill out, calm down, give them what they want. Pretty soon, they'll come back to my way and what it is that I've already designed for them. Trump is necessary. I hate to say that. He's necessary to get down to the very underbelly of what really goes on with how money controls America. And through that, our adversary is behind that pulling the strings with everybody's flesh on parade with a debased human nature that is out. And what you're really finding in certain segments of the church is that you're really finding an inauthentic gospel and you're finding a gospel of convenience and immediacy, which is not biblical, nor contextual, nor scriptural. And Jesus wants us to come back to a centered Christ where everyone orients around him and for us to stop trying to tell him what to do and to let him tell us what to do. That's what yeah, man, man, there's so much to unpack. And we almost <laughs> out of time. And 
Hope you guys have been enjoying the show. Go ahead and drop your comments if you haven't already. Um, you know, it's just it's just so much to unpack here. So, so Pastor Law, listen, there are still not just citizens. They're still pastors. There's still a lot of believers that support, maybe not his actions, but maybe support the policies and the things that maybe he did, right? And then there are some pastors who will say, uh, no matter how bad it is, the thought of them going democratic, because in their minds, the leftist agenda is satanic and uh, with people on the democratic side supporting abortion and all these other issues and, and all of the stuff that they see as just completely away from their values, that they can't even come to terms with moving away from the party, no matter how bad President Trump may be acting or doing. I ain't talking about citizens. I'm talking about the church now. What do you say to that, Pastor Law? So when I decided to run for Commonwealth Attorney back in 2011, uh, I'll never forget this. God placed uh, a word in my spirit concerning uh, politics in general. And he said, put no trust in man because man will let you down. He said, put your trust only in me. In other words, don't put your trust in flesh. Put your trust only in me. What I would say to believers is, God can use anyone. It doesn't matter what party they're in. God can use anyone. It doesn't matter what their position is. If the Bible says that God holds the heart of the king in his hand and he can turn it whichever way he wants, he means that. If the Bible says that God is sovereign, which means he controls everything and everyone, he means that. If the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein belongs to the Lord, he means that. As believers, we got to stop looking to people and start looking to God. And I agree with you, Ray. I believe Trump was necessary because it opened up some stuff. It exposed some stuff, particularly about the church. And so what I would say to believers, take your eyes off a of man and put your eyes back on God and let God be God. He'll handle the rest. You act, they act like they need uh, a man to go and fix certain policies. That's a heart issue. Only God can change a heart issue. You need to put your eyes on God and let God handle his business. Yeah, and there are some, Jason and Pastor Ray, who are still praying that this will be overturned some kind of way. Foolishness. Still praying <laughs> that he will remain in office. Praying. I, I'm not talking about citizens. I'm talking about Holy in Jesus. churches praying. African that, angels. African angels. African angels. That a miracle will overturn I'm sorry. this situation. They said no. <laughs> okay, let me be serious. What no, do we no, say no, to that? Is, what what, no, what no, do no, we no, say? No. Because not only is there a fracture in the nation, there is a fracture in the church, y'all. And, no, yes. and, and that's and we where gotta, we are, Pastor Swan. We got to deal with that. That's where we are, because we, we make the mistake of assuming that Americanism and its ideals and Christianity are the same. And they are not. They are not the same. Uh, they are completely and totally different. And so when you get down to, uh, to authentic gospel, it's really about, you know, self-sacrifice. God first. In America, it is individualistic and it is me, mine and no one else's. And I got individual liberty without responsibility. That is not the scripture, which is to say, let me just show you the kind of God we serve. When a woman can win an outright election in a southern state, but because she looks a certain way, she loses in the last hour when the election is stolen from her. But the kind of God we serve looks for the marginalized. I'm, I feel a preach coming on me right here. Preach, preach, preach. But, but watch this, Pastor Swan. It's the same kind of woman in Samaria that Jesus said he needed to go get because if he got her, he would get the rest of the Samarians to come follow him. Stacey Abrams represents the Samaritan woman. He rep she represents her simply because she is responsible for not only the presidency, the vice presidency, the Senate, 
and also the first African-American man elected uh, to the Senate in the South, more or less Georgia, from one woman who had been ostracized. When Jesus changed the trajectory of the Samaritan woman, he changed her by class, changed her by culture, and then set her free economically. And Stacy represents that in terms of what faith can do in a person who doesn't look like what America calls beautiful, but God uses her anyway, simply so the other side will have to repent and acknowledge God, which is to say this, I do believe, y'all correct me on his name, uh, the, the, the man with Jewish, Jewish heritage that was elected for the Senate Don Olson. Don Olson. Olson. Mm -hmm. Just in case folk don't get it, that God is working through Abrams. If they don't get it, he lets Ossoff win, who has Jewish heritage and background, who is 33 years old. Yep. Now, if that ain't your Bible, I don't know what else is. So in Georgia. In, in Georgia. 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 In, in Georgia, a traditionally red state. Red state. That has red neck red. state. Call it what red. it is. Red <laughs> neck state. That has Call turned what it is. Song. Pastor Law, I see where you are in the new year. You coming oh. out hard. Boy. I see I see where you are. <laughs> Listen, y'all. Red neck state. We, we got to continue this conversation another time. We're already done. Uh, I knew it was going to be this way. Once we got started, it was going it was going to end pretty quick. But if you're still listening, still watching, drop your comment in our pastor study Facebook page. We want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on all of this? You know we're going to come back next week, pick up where we left off. We didn't even talk about what you just said, the Senate races in Georgia. And to be honest, I ain't heard any noise about those elections being fraudulent. No, um, because the senator that lost, uh, Lochner, she was one of the ones that was going to object. After the insurrection, she turned around and withdrew her rejection. Right. It, it shook her. Yeah. And she said, I'm going to do the right thing. And, and my point to that, Pastor Law, is there were some people who were objecting to the presidential election who was on the same ballot <laughs> and won. So, so how are you going to win on the same ballot that the president lost and you claiming fraud? If it's fraud in his election, election, it's fraud in theirs. It, right. But Hypocrisy. that's where we are. So we got to go, y'all. We love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in with us as we start this year. We know we're going to come back with more. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing to someone else. This is Smooth 88.1 with the HOV.